Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for signing up for this virtual open evening. Very strange times, and usually I'm speaking to a hall of people on multiple occasions in an evening, and you've already had a chance to walk around our, our wonderful building, and meet our fantastic staff, and most importantly, our amazing students. And I'm really sorry that you can't do that, but hopefully over the course of the next few minutes and uh, hearing from me, you'll get a flavour of what this school's about and certainly looking on the websites and keeping up to date um, through our correspondence. You get a good picture about our school, although you can't be here and I'm sorry about that. But thanks for taking the time. So I'm Peter Groves, I'm the principal here. I've been at this school since we opened and we opened in 2009 and I've been the head teacher here for the last four years. And I have to say it's one of the most proud, proud things of my life to be part of our journey. And I'm here today uh, leading one of the best schools in London for boys. So what about our school? What is it about? Now you're really lucky. You're in a borough where the schools are very good across the board. But when you sat there at home, <clears throat> and I'm speaking now to those young men who are sat there hopefully watching this as well, you've got to choose a school that's going to suit you. You've got to think about where am I going to be happy? Where am I going to develop the best? What school's going to help me to achieve where I want to be? And I have to say to you, when I'm speaking to you, you need to think, does this fit with me? Does this sound like something that I'm going to enjoy? Does this sound like the sort of school that, that's going to help me to get to where I need to be? Because we want people to choose to come here. There are lots of different types of schools. They've got lots of different visions. They've got lots of different ethoses. So you really need to want to come here. And I have to say, over the years, lots of boys have wanted to come here. And lots of boys and lots of families have been part of our journey. We benefited from them being part of our community and they've helped us to get to where we are. But what is the vision? You know, what is it that you're signing up for and joining this school? And the first thing and the most important thing for me is the fact that we are all equal. Every single person who comes to this school has got their own talents. Every single person here has got their right to achieve, their right to be happy, their right to flourish and excel. There's a talent in everyone and it needs to be found, it needs to be celebrated, it needs to be harnessed, but we're equal, we're equal and we'll treat everybody with respect, dignity, we'll learn about different cultures, we'll learn about different beliefs, but we accept equality. And we don't set our limits low, we don't set our targets low. There's no reason why one of the boys who sat at home here can't be the next prime minister or a future prime minister, probably not the next one because they're only 11 years old. Why can't they be a Steve Jobs of the future, inventing something that no one really had before? And these are the ambitions that we want for our boys. We want our boys to pioneer, to excel, to flourish, and therefore we don't set a limit to their potential. And everything we do is about exceeding and pushing to be the best that we can possibly be. We realise that you can't do that alone. You know, parents, Parenting and being a parent myself, I know this, it's, it's, it's hard and you can't get there on your own. You need to work in tandem. You need to be a team. And as a school, we reach out to our parents and we support our parents. Sometimes we don't always agree, but we work together for the very best of what we're all here for. And ultimately, that's for every young man to succeed and be happy. And we work so well in parent with parental partnership that together we can help to let our boys' dreams become true. And then the final thing is the fact that we're all human and we all make mistakes. No one here um, probably watching this has never made a mistake. But the key thing is what you do about a mistake. And the key thing is not being afraid to make a mistake. You learn more from falling off a bike than you do from keeping stabilizers on. And everything we do at this school is about reflecting on our actions, reflecting on our learning to make sure that we can improve. If you make the same mistake too many times, then that's not quite right, but certainly it's reflection. So a clear vision there of equality, of everyone being equal, of all achieving their potential and being allowed to flourish to achieve their potential, of a group of people working in a community who share goal and people who aren't afraid to risk, to make mistakes and learn from them and therefore to benefit from them. And that comes down to what we're saying your young men are going to get. That's what you're saying what you're going to have boys when you finish with us. And we are an 11 to 18 school and many boys stay on to us uh, with us for 18 or we help them to get onto other pathways like our Harris Westminster selective sixth form for certain students or, or pathways for apprenticeships. 
But when you leave this school, you're going to have a key. You're going to have a master key. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to have a big ceremony and bring out a key and give you this fancy key. It's something that you can't see. But it's something that will unlock your future. A master key unlocks everything. And it's made up of two parts. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm very clear on this. There's a part in it which is fundamental because without it, you can't go to the next step. And that's your, that's your qualifications, your GCSEs, your A-levels. They're, 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 they're there. They're tangibles that you have to have. You have to show your certificates to get certain jobs. And that's very important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that we want you to have active citizenship. We want to help you go from being young boys to men, to gentlemen, to men who can take part in society, to men who know right and wrong, to men who have a really wonderful worldview of tolerance, of equality, of the idea that we can make a difference and we can improve this world. And sat here in a school, in a controlled environment, we can set ourselves to a higher standard. And certainly we hold our boys and our staff and each other to a real high standard of how you should be. And everything we do is to help the young men who leave us really be able to take a, a really flourishing role in the world. And I'll come back to what that all means. But first of all, the academic success. Now, in uncertain times, which we're all in, and obviously last year, exam results aren't published because they, they weren't exams. But in uncertain times, we are a certainty with academic success. And I can say that to you because we've always achieved exceptionally well. We've achieved very, very well compared to national and local levels. And we're consistently in the top 5% of schools for progress. We've been regularly recognised by external bodies such as the Mayor for London with the Schools for Success Scheme. And regardless of, of where your son sits in terms of his ability when he joins us at the school, be it a high flyer who's flourishing, uh, be it a student who needs a bit more help, be it a student who might well have English as an additional language, all categories of students that the government recognise far, far achieved the national. And there's a couple of graphs which really show this these are two graphs. They're showing you what we've achieved in GCSEs for the last three years on the Progress 8 and Attainment 8 measures. And you can see there in orange that we are achieving way, way above national, where regularly nationals around about zero. Incidentally, that's national for all schools. If you did national for boys, you'd see that boys regularly are minus 0.2. People don't talk about it, but boys nationally hugely, hugely underachieved. Not here. But you can see there we're way above national on the progress scores of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.75, but also far, far above those outstanding local schools that are nearby where they're doing very, very well at 0 0.3, 0 0.25, but not near where we are for progress. And progress is key. Progress is saying, how much do the students develop by being in your school? How much do you help them to increase their potential by being in your school? And you can see we've done a, a fantastic job there. Amazing staff, amazing students and wonderful families working together. The attainment eight is the pure scores they get. And you can see there that we outperform local and national as well. And I'm proud of that, but I'm very, very proud of our progress. And what are they progressing in? What is it that they're going to learn and study at this school? Lots of people ask questions like how many GCSEs are they doing and, and what, what's going on here and so on. So what is our curriculum? Well, first of all, our curriculum is designed for our students. We are a sports and enterprise college. We are in a boys school. We're in inner London. And so when we're designing what we teach our students, we're very much thinking about the subjects we want them to learn. But what aspects of those subjects do we want to draw out? What aspects of those subjects do you think our boys need to have that knowledge to move forward in their future? And so we have a really broad and balanced curriculum at Key Stage 3, which is for three full years delivered by specialist teachers in a fixed curriculum. So there will be regular music every week, regular art every week, drama. These, these lessons and these subjects are so powerful. They shape a student. They might not take them on, in key stage four or key stage five, but learning a musical instrument, appreciating art is so powerful and wonderful that we have that in our curriculum. But they also have a rich academic core, 
which they will take through. And then those STEM subjects, those really powerful design, technology, ICT computing subjects. So the curriculum is broad and balanced. We look at it on a local level and what we want them to know. Our teaching is innovative and it needs to be. Boys learn in a very different way from girls. And we are specialists at delivering boys education. We know how they work. You'll know at home how boys work. Boys need snappy tasks. Boys need an element of competition. Boys need um, to be able to learn and develop um, in quite an open way, not a quiet way. And what I mean by that is lots of conversations, uh, lots of quick tasks where you get quick feedback. And boys will struggle unless they've got these clear parameters in place. And we've got that fixed in our curriculum, hence the outcomes that we're, we're coming out with. EBAC is at our heart, and I, I'm, I'm telling you this now, if you come to this school, 90% of the students here will do what we call the EBAC. And this goes through to Key Stage 4, which is a really strong academic foundation. They will do English literature and English maths. They'll do math, they'll do um, maths. They'll do at least a double award in science, and many of our, of our boys who are appropriate to do will do triple science. They will all do it in a modern language, Humanities is key, a geography or a history. And because we're an enterprise and sports college, they all do sports as our core curriculum. And then they have the two further options to take. And we want those in the creative arts subjects, so drama and music and, and art, and also vocational subjects, such as business um, and travel and tourism. And then obviously they could potentially do a further humanities, um, a second humanities. And then all those courses are mapped out so that it can then continue at our very successful sixth form, either within the Federation or on our shared site with the girls, where we've got a pathway of most comprehensive A-level offer that I can think of. Or they might well join our selective sixth form at Harris Westminster or some of the other sites. And many students also join other sixth forms in the area. But that's our curriculum. It's broad, it's balanced, it's innovative, and it's delivered really, really well. And most importantly, the boys enjoy their lessons. Now, what's key? People ask me this. You're a boys school and yet you're in the top 5%. What, what's key? What do you do? What's the difference? And for me, the difference is two things. Number one, you need to make sure people are pushed. You need to make sure they're supported. You need to make sure they're not overly pressured. But you need to make sure that boys are pushed. You need to make the tasks that they're doing just about reachable, not too far away, not too easy. And our teachers work really hard in a setting curriculum environment so that the tasks that they set are a bit of a stretch to the boys. It gets the brain working. And then once they've mastered that, and we do repeat and we revisit and we interleave what we're doing over time so it cements in the long term memory. But that's the part of it. That's the plan. So it's excellent teaching, pitching it right. But more more than that, embedded in everything we do is word, is literacy. Boys nationally hugely underachieve in English. Last year they were half a grade down, half a grade down. And one of the key reasons for that is because boys aren't encouraged to read. By reading a book, you understand vocabulary, you understand words. Now I ask you this, and I haven't got any of you here, but I'd ask you this and there'd be lots of hands going up. Can any of you name a film which is better than the book that you've read? And the answer to that probably is no, because your imagination, boys, your mind has no limits, whereas a film does. And reading is something that we need to get the boys to do, a foster a, tab a habit for it, foster a talent for it, foster a love for it, because the more words you're exposed to in the different context that comes up, really expands your horizons and it means you can access the other subjects to a high level and we do an awful lot on reading but one of the things i'm most proud of is the fact that we've got i think the best library in the country for 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 for, for schools and last year even though the school shut down in march over ten thousand books were borrowed that's incredible so that's the curricula that's the academic success but i spoke to you earlier about what i think is more important more important for helping students in their long term future and their lives. And it's these five traits we put it down to. There are lots of things that we try and develop, but we try to limit it to just five key things we want them to be. So the first there is an idea of curiosity. 
that you don't just take an answer, that you're curious, that you want to find out more. Now, parents, think back to when your young men there were small children. They asked why a lot. They asked questions a lot. And that curiosity feeds the mind and it feeds the excitement. And we don't want that to stop. And we want the boys to question, to find out answers, to find out more and to develop there. Curiosity really does grow the mind. We want the boys to be confident. Now, confidence is an interesting word, not arrogant, but confident in themselves, confident in their beliefs, confident in how they hold themselves, confident that they're able to do the right thing. And we foster confidence throughout the school and we build this in lessons and we talk about it when you're around the building and we talk about it in how you engage and we talk about it when things go wrong. And in this word, and this is a word that we really do need at the moment, and certainly the staff and students of this school are showing it um, every single day with the, the lockdown and the coming back to school, but resilience. If you don't try, you will never know. And resilience is the idea that you will try harder, that you'll learn again, that you do it again and you do it again. And by practice and by being resilient and never giving up, you will, you will at the end of the day prosper. Respect I've spoken about, and it's respect at all levels. Every person here is treated with respect. OK, boys, you are, if you do not know this, the most important thing in your parents' life. You really are. And it's important that when you're at this school, you're respected, respected for who you are. But it's also important equally that you respect all the other boys and all the staff to that level. So respect is key. And then finally, ambitious. Ambitious for yourselves, ambitious for your future, ambitious for our school, ambitious for each other, ambitious for society. Why can't we do better? Why can't we try harder? Why can't we end some climate? Why can't we help with the climate change issues? Why can't we make the world a more tolerant place? Ambitious. And those five traits we build on in everything we do, both within the curriculum, which I've just spoken about, but also away from the curriculum in our active citizenship programme. We have weekly assemblies. They're on our website. I do ask you to look at them. They're the most powerful event that we have in a weekly basis. The boys come in the hall and they're inspired by speakers or inspired by ideas. They're challenged sometimes made to really think about themselves and think about things in the world. But the idea of those and going through them helps to shape them and how they might well look at the world and look at themselves. We do it through a PSHE program, through an amazing extracurricular offer with lots of clubs each day and lots of activities happening, um, be it from a chess club all the way through to our huge sports program. And we do this regularly throughout the year and it is designed and mapped out just like our school curriculum from the year of seven, when the boys come in at 11 years old, all the way up to 18, including career pathways, including charity work, so that over the time they develop these active citizenship traits and talents. So those two aspects, active citizenship and academic success come together to help our students to go on and leave us and prosper in the world. And I've been delighted, I always am over the summer holidays, um, when you see the boys coming back from university and uh, the, the men coming back to university. And, and I'm quite tall, but I look up at them and they're, hello, sir, how are you? And this is what we've been doing and this is what he's up to. And they are showing whole, wholly as a person that they've got that active citizenship, but they're also you know, prospering in what they do. And we're really proud of our alumni and what they're doing. But respect for all I've spoken about, because this is quite key, because this is how we deal with each other on a daily basis. And I think I need to be clear with you here. I am a stickler for rules. We're a traditional school in a sense. We are disciplined. We're not disciplined in a sense. We just tell people off and give people sanctions and stuff like that. No, 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 no. You get nowhere with that. We're very, very clear that you can learn from your actions. And we're very, very clear in restorative justice and the idea that if someone's done something wrong, you need, to, you need to explain to them what it is that they've done wrong. We call it explaining the why. And the idea of explaining the why means you help people to develop and you help people to learn. But we're really clear on the idea that if you are a respectful person, if you're respectful for the rules, the boys, the school, the staff, yourself, your work, you should feel like you're in the sun. You know, you should feel like you are the center of everything. And so we work really hard to praise our boys and give them rewards for everything. And our Harris Point system, um, the boys are really proud 
as you can see here, these gentlemen with their badges, um, the stars to say how many points they've got, the attendance badges, the book reading badges, um, and we reward that. And it's really important that you reward it. If you work hard in the real world, you get rewards. Why shouldn't the boys get the same? So we have strict rules. We want perfect uniform. We want the boys here on time. You know, if you if you go to a train station to get a train, it doesn't wait for you. If you go to a job interview in life, when you get there late, you're unlikely to be given the job. So it's important these life skills um, are, are there, but it's also important that the boys are, are nurtured and nudged to do the right thing. And what we want them to be able to do in the end is to monitor themselves and regulate their own behaviour and to push themselves on um, so that they do their own homework, that they do further reading, that they um, push themselves. So respect for all and our positive reward system. Now, I think it's quite important that I don't focus on COVID-19 because your sons are hopefully going to be joining a school when this is you know, we were at a turning point and we're, and we're moving on with the world post hopefully some of the developments that they're talking about in the new year. But I think you can really judge a school by what they did and are doing during COVID-19. And I have to say, I'm immensely proud of, of the community. And when I say community, I mean the families and the boys and the staff. And I mean all our staff at this school, not just the teachers and what they did. And what I think we did is second to none. You know, we made contact with our students from day one. We called the students at least once a week, and there were quite a few boys actually. We called their families every day to help them to get the boys to engage and to check that they're okay for welfare and so on. We put on, I think, an unrivaled virtual learning offer, and that included taking out about 105 laptops to various different families, and at some point putting on a digital school at school. So we, we managed to get our curriculum online. Our teachers were teaching lessons. Our teachers were adapting to this, this new teams that I'm on now and, and actually meaning that the students weren't at home and lost. And you as parents weren't at home not knowing what to do to, to help your students. We had weekly PE lessons online and challenges. And you're welcome to look on the website where you can see some of those. We also realised that you still need to push and you still can have rewards and you can still get boys to challenge themselves to do new things, both in the world of Hegarty Maths, which is one of our online tasks or, or art competitions and then positively reward. So we didn't just say the school's closed and um, here's a book to read. We really carried on with the school. We did virtual assemblies um, and I was really proud of all that. But the thing I'm more proud of is the well-being. The, the well-being that we gave our families and the well-being that we gave each other as a staff and the pastoral care. And I have to say, the staff at this school made made untold differences to, to people. You know, in very uncertain times, we ran a we ran a food bank and we were giving out breakfasts every two weeks um, to, to lots of families who really appreciated that. We also we also took time over the holidays to still call families and to see if they were OK and to support students with their needs and wants. So I was very, very proud of that. And we didn't just think, you know, when we came back in June and we, we came back in June for year 10 and year 12 and for quite a number of students, we didn't just sink straight back into classrooms. We, we put on a, a good program where every child met a, a support worker. Certain children were given some counselling because we did have bereavements and we have had quite, quite a lot of uh, difficult situations. And we haven't just left it there. All my staff have been informed in how to best support children back into school so that they can flourish. And the key here is that we care. And the key here is if you want people to be happy and succeed in school and get great results and so on, the first thing you need to do is really care and gain trust and be able to make the students feel happy in an environment and supported in an environment and known in an environment. And in the community itself, the way our parents pulled behind us and the way we pulled with our, with our parents, I'm so, so proud of. And just the other week when we came back, the, the, the thing that showed me that the most was on the first day back when we had a full school, we were at 98.9% .9 attendance. And the boys who weren't here weren't allowed to be here because of quarantining. So there's a lot of support and there's a lot of trust. And COVID-19 has reminded me of what a wonderful community that we work in. So what else? You've heard from me and um, you're going to have opportunities over the next week or two to hear from other people. But what about 
our parents, what do they say about us? All our parental surveys are done at parents evenings. They're available on the website, but I've just pulled out here a few of the things. But the one there that says, would I recommend this school to a parent? You know, almost 100 percent strongly or, or, or agree with that statement. And they, they really do. We have lots of parents asking us um, about relatives and friends and whether they can join this school because of the success and the, and the nurture that they feel and the support that they get. And that's one of the things that I'm most proud of is the fact that the parents choose us because we care about their boys. We know their sons and of course we'll push them to do the best they can. They feel that we look after them and that they feel they're safe. And then what about the staff? You know, in inner London, there's a lot of a lot of difficulty with staffing because there's a lot of pull factors which you will experience living in London, the cost of living here and so on and so forth. So a stable staff in a school is something which is hard to achieve. And there and the factors that are in my control, I do my very best because I feel I've got the best group of professionals here. I'm really proud of them, actually. And if you could walk around this building and meet them, I think you, you'd see why I was proud. They're professional. They care about their jobs, they care about their craft and teaching is is a craft. It's a profession and it should be treated with that level of respect and they certainly do. But they support each other and they care about each other and a staff body that are proud to be here and a staff body that are happy to be here. Rubs off on the students and certainly I wish you could see it, but the staff make this school and their ambition and aspiration for, for the, the students who come here and maybe your sons and I hope your sons um, is something which makes this place really special. And that also leads on to the fact why we have quite a stable staff and a stable staff is really key to success. You know, I myself have been here 11 years. The senior staff have been here on average a good six years and many, many of the teaching staff have been here for a long period of time as well. So our staff are really proud of us and I'm really proud of them. And you're going to hear from some students next week if you'd like to, but we asked a few um, just this week what they thought about the school and we chose them from around the place and actually um, they're, they're, they're characters uh, from around the school. But these are some of the things they said and actually they made me really proud. But um, what do you think we should say? We said to Harry and Harry said in year seven, I think the parents should know that the children will be safe and happy at this school. What about Louis in year eight? And he said, the best thing about Harris Boys Academy is you can open yourself up and be honest with the teachers. And so you can feel more like a family. and You don't have to be scared of anything anymore. You know, and it's quite profound in there, but you feel safe here. It feels like we're like a family. You know, we do care about each other in a similar type of way, and we do know each other in a similar type of way. We are a small school compared to some of the schools out there, 150 children in a year group and therefore 100, and 750 um, in the lower school up until year 11 means that we get to know everyone, get to know the staff, get to know the students and knowing people does make a difference to an environment. When you go over a thousand children, there'll be teachers at the school that won't, the children won't know and the teachers won't know the children and, and you lose that. Brian in year 11 and our year 11s are, are really having to think about the world at the moment with the six months of lost learning and the uncertainty with their results. And they're really proud to be here and we're really proud to have them. But Brian says, the teachers are always going to push you to be great. And I think that's the key thing. We push our boys for them to achieve their potential and get that balance right. You know, there's no point pressuring people because they're not going to flourish. As I said earlier, they need to be in a happy place to, to succeed. And in here, I think this school, um, the last one here, Murray in year nine, I think that school are good at helping us learn. And if we don't get it, they will help and make sure that we understand. And that's the key thing is the fact that our teachers will find out if students don't get it and they will help them to get it and help them to understand in the right type of way. And that's one of the reasons why we have such great progress. So I've spoken for about half an hour now and I'm aware having done uh, lots of teams events myself, you, you get to you get to a certain point where you lose interest uh, on online and I appreciate you paying attention for this amount of time. But you want to know some more. You know, this is a big decision. Um, I'm a parent myself and I know that the boys at home are the most precious, precious thing in your lives. And you want them to do the very best in their lives and therefore the, the school that you choose is so, so important for that. So I encourage you, please, to go online. You can't see the academy. It's a beautiful building. It's 10 years old, but it looks as good as new. And follow our virtual tour and you'll get a picture of what the building's like and, and, what, and what happens there. 
It won't show you our world class PE facilities. We share those with King's College um, London, and that's just over the hill uh, in Honor Oak. And we go over there on buses, and the boys get an amazing PE offer, and they, they love the university standard um, grounds that we have. You'll also be able to sign up if you like, because I know many of you might want to find out a bit more. You know, what about the Senko? There'll be people out there who've got questions you want to ask about that. Well, next week you're encouraged to go to a, a more discussion forum where you'll be able to speak and see and ask questions and meet the Senko. You're also going to be able to meet some of the students. We're going to we're going to try and get you a selection of students who who will hopefully tell you about our school um, and be honest with you. And we'll tell them that we, we want them to be honest about what the school's about. And you'll also have a chance to meet some of the pastoral team and, and they'll be able to talk to you about some of the wonderful work that they do. The website is full of information. It will show you the, the information about the over 2000 trips we did um, on average each year. And obviously that was cut short last year, but about that many because we want the boys to have their horizons broadened. And sometimes you need to go outside of the classroom. It will show you about some of the wonderful work the students are doing. It will talk to you about some of the, um, the amazing areas of the school. But do have a look at the website because I think you can tell a lot about a school from what they do regularly. You know, and our website is regularly updated. And um, if you've got any further questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat here. And I think some of you already have, and I'll be staying online to answer them. Um, but you're also welcome to email us at Harris um, as at the website there, which is info at harrisdavidgeboys.org.uk. So the final reminder is, as I'm sure you're well aware, is the online submission date is Saturday the 31st of August, uh, sorry, of October, not August, October. And on there, you need to choose your preferences of schools. Because of the COVID-19, um, we are not doing our banding testing. Normally, we have a process of banding testing, uh, which ensures we have a comprehensive intake. This year, we don't have that. So there are, there are no tests. This year, it is a case of you would choose us, and you'd need to choose this as a very high rank to, to be able to come here. So if you do want to come here, please make sure you do that. And then that will be the submission that goes through. So finally, I thank you for taking the time to listen to me speak. I'm immensely proud of this school. I'm immensely proud of the people who come here. And I would be delighted, delighted if you chose us um, to help your son develop um, as he goes from being a young, and I see them today, the young year sevens who come in and uh, at the age of 11, as they grow and develop through that active citizenship we spoke about, gaining those academic successes to become the young men who leave and flourish. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. I'm just going to say if there are any questions um, from the people who've been watching the chat that they think I should address to the group, um, so I don't know if that's the case, Mr. Brett. Uh, there's a fair few questions on catchment area. OK. So uh, thank you very much. That's a, that's a good question. Normally, the catchment area is done by our testing. This year we do not have testing and this. Therefore, the catchment area we do not know. We do not know. I can tell you in the most popular band, um, as in the, the most populous band, sorry, the one with the most students in last year, the average distance was about three and a half thousand meters, so about 3.5 kilometers. So you could use that as a rough rule of thumb. Obviously, being an all boys school means we only pull from half of the gender, so our, our distances would be probably slightly bigger than um, some of the, 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 um, the mixed schools. Any other questions, Mr. Brett? Uh, yes, yeah, a few on class sizes and then on why a boys school. Brilliant. OK, class sizes are a fundamental of us. We we know that um, teachers need to be able to get to know students. They need to be able to support students. So our class sizes we set as a maximum really of 25. There are one or two classes in the school that might be slightly bigger than that. So maybe the odd triple science class. Um, and one or two of the of the higher set classes might go to 27 or so. But we want the boys um, to be able to get the right amount of support. So many of our class sizes will be in the 20s, but we do or we do run some class sizes of about 11 or 12 students. So it depends on on the band. It depends on the setting. It depends on the students. But we fundamentally um, want small class sizes. So we would have seven classes for year seven 
Um, whereas I think most schools would, would run maybe five or six for 150 students. Um, so that was the class sizes one. And in Wire Boys School, I think you need to ask yourself, um, you know, first of all, is your son going to like the things that we've just been talking about? Um, but fundamentally, boys underachieve. They underachieve. They they get lost, I think, in the mix, mixed uh, system. There are quite a lot of trials now where in mixed set schools, they're actually teaching the boys separately anyway, um, certainly in maths um, and some of the science subjects. But we here are very clear on this idea that in a boys environment, you, you need to ensure that the boys go out with very, very clear ideas of equality and you really need to challenge gender and promote uh, feminism and so on. And we work really, really hard on that. But a boys school um, has a boys curriculum which fits boys and how boys learn. And we believe that we've got that mastered and therefore our boys flourish and develop and they are able to go out into the world. But a mixed school and a boys school is a question that you as parents would need to ask. But we're specialist in boys. And I think that's really important. Anything else, Mr. Britt? Uh, I think that's covered most things, actually. We're just doing the last few questions in the in the chat. OK. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I'll, I'll still stay here, but you're very welcome to to leave. And we hope we see you at some of the other follow up events and hopefully work with you as parents.
So we've just addressed quite a lot of wonderful questions that you've been asking us. If you want to find out more about the Academy, then please do uh, go on the website, join us at our follow up forums, contact us, and we really do look forward to uh, working with you, hopefully, as future parents. Have a lovely evening and thank you for joining us.